Hey y'all, welcome back. Today's homework is go we're going over the sum and difference identities. Um, so let me pull those up real quick. These are not e formulas that you need to memorize for any reason, but you do need to know how to use them. So uh, I will give you these formulas for you know any quiz or test that I give you. Um, but uh, but you do like I said, you need to know how to use them. So let's take a look at number one. Now this is already kind of set up for you. Most of the problems that you typically have to solve are gonna be, or, or evaluate rather, are gonna be more like this, okay, where you have to figure out a combination for two angle measures to either add or subtract to get this angle measure. But these first few are kind of already split up for you. Um, so this is just gonna be a direct application of those formulas. So um, this is gonna be the sum, we're gonna use here the sum formula for cosine. Okay, so I can see we're adding two angles and we're gonna use cosine. So uh, so let's go ahead and start plugging in all of our angle measures. So you can see over to the, I guess you're right, um, uh, all the formulas over there. And so this first angle measure we're going to say is our, our A value, right? That's our A angle. And then our B angle is going to be this one right here. Okay, so when we go start plugging stuff in, uh, we're going to reference these two angles. So cosine of... Let's see here. Let's make that a little bigger here. Okay, so this is going to equal. Um, now notice this is plus. So on that formula over th there, no, over there, <laughs> um, you can see that the you know the plus or minus um, between the cosine a, the cosines and the sines, um, is flipped, and it says minus plus. So. Just want to remind you that those are going to correspond to whether you have uh, a plus or a minus in the original statement. So, in other words, if you have uh, a sum here, then we're going to use minus in between the cosines and sines, and if it's minus, we'll use plus. So, uh, it's flipped for the co for the cosine ones, but for sine, it's it's the same. Um, but let, so let's see how this will work out. So, cosine of angle A. Uh, which is pi over 4. Times cosine of angle B, which is pi over 3. And so here's where we're going to actually do minus sine of angle A, which is pi over 4. times sine of angle B, which is pi over 3. Okay, now all these can be evaluated using the unit circle. Um, so that shouldn't be too bad. We've been doing a lot of that recently. So let me go ahead and hide this and bring up our unit circle. Uh, maybe I can make it a little smaller here. Uh, okay, so cosine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3. Let's see, can I do a dot on here? I want to say I found the dot at some point. Oh, wait, you know what? There we go. Oh, wait, you can't see here. Let me uh, bring this down just a little bit more. Actually, we're just working in quadrant 1 right now, so might as well just look at quadrant 1. Okay, so uh, cosine of pi over 3 is going to be 1 half. Okay, minus the sine of pi over 4, which is also root 2 over 2. And times the sine of pi over 3, which is uh, root 3 over 2. Now, you shouldn't really need a calculator to simplify this. Okay, we're going to just multiply these, we're going to multiply these, and then we'll combine like terms at the end. So this is going to equal root 2 times 1 is just root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. Minus root 2 times root 3 is going to be root 6, and 2 times 2 is 4. So luckily we've already got a common denominator. Uh, it is possible that you end up with not a common denominator. Uh, that doesn't happen very frequently. Uh, I'm curious to see if that's even going to happen with us uh, today, but um, but we already have this particular problem. We already have common denominator, so we're just going to combine these. 
and we'll have root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. And there's not really anything you can do to simplify it after that. So this is the exact value of cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. Now, what we're really evaluating here, by the way, is cosine of, let's see, that'd be 3 plus 4 is 7 pi over 12, which is not something on your unit circle. So it's not like you can just quickly identify um, what that x value is uh, on the point on the unit circle. So, um, so this is how you would evaluate that, right? This is equal to cosine of 7 pi over 12. Okay. Wait for that bell to go. I just wanted, you don't have to write this, but I just wanted to point out that this is what we're actually evaluating here. Um, now, all the rest of these are going to be solved very similarly. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy and paste my work and change the values as needed. Okay. All right, so this will just make it go a little bit faster. Uh, for the second one, we've got a sum formula for sine, so we're adding two angles together here. Uh, now, what we're actually going to evaluate here is going to be sine of 285, okay? Which is, again, not something that we're going to find um, as one of our common angles on the unit circle. But this is what we're actually evaluating. Now, it's already split up for you, um, so kind of that, that part is done already. And so we're just going to sort of plug in 135 for A and 150 for B. Okay. So uh, let's go bring up those formulas because I don't have them memorized. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're using the sum formula for sine. So that's going to be the sine of angle A, which is 135, times the cosine of angle B, which is 150. Uh, plus the cosine of angle A times the sine of angle B. All right. Uh, so now we're going to go and, and actually evaluate all that stuff. So sine of 135, let's bring up that unit circle. I'll just put it in front. There we go. If I can grab it, just make it a little, actually, uh, what do we actually need here? So 135 and 150, all that stuff's in quadrant two, so I'm just gonna pull that out. Okay, so sine of 135 is gonna be root two over two. Oh, look at that, I don't have to change anything. Uh, cosine of 150 is gonna be negative root three over two. Okay, and then we've got plus cosine of 135, which is going to be negative root 2 over 2, uh, times the sine of 150, which is 1 half. Okay, now I'm going to multiply this stuff together, and I'm going to get negative root 6, right, root 2 times negative root 3 over 4. Um, now, let me put this in parentheses just because plus minus looks kind of weird. So I think what I'm going to do is just every time I have a negative, I'm going to put it in parentheses just to make that a little clearer. Um, so over here, we've got root 2 times 1, so that's minus root 2 over 4. And so here we go. It's going to be actually very similar to our last answer. Negative root 6 minus root 2. All that divided by 4. And so you could put it in the calculator if you're interested in what the exact uh, the rounded answer is um, but it's fine to leave it um, in exact form okay this is actually preferable uh, now hopefully you would know how to put that in the calculator but that's kind of a whole separate deal here um, so let's look at number two now starting with number two we are actually gonna have to figure out okay I'm gonna find two angle measures that either add or subtract to 105 so I'm looking at all my options here. I'm going to pull this out. I'm looking for two angles that either add to 105 or subtract to 105. And there's going to be more than one right answer here. There's not necessarily just going to be one combination. You just got to find a combination. 
So uh, let's see here. 30 plus 60, that'd be 90. So we're not even close there. Uh, 45 plus 90 would be too big. That'd be 135. Um, 40, wait, wait a minute. 45 plus 60, I think that's going to work. 45 plus 60 is 105. So I'm going to start by rewriting this as cosine of 45 degrees um, plus 60 degrees. And the reason why we're picking two angle measures uh, that are the common angles on the unit circle is because now when I go to split all this up and actually use the sum, uh, the sum formula, uh, I, I'll be able to evaluate each one of these. Right? So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to just copy and paste this to make my life a little bit easier here. Okay, so the cosine, we're working with the cosine sum formula. So I'm going to have to modify a lot of this. The cosine sum formula, you can see over to the side, is going to be the cosine of angle A, which is 45, times the cosine of angle B, which is 60. Here we'll do minus the sine of angle A, which is 45, times the sine of 60. So I need to evaluate each one of these, and all that's in the first quadrant. So I'm going to bring up my unit circle here, but I'm just going to focus on the first quadrant. OK, so cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Nice, I don't have to change that. Uh, cosine of 60 is going to be 1 half minus should be minus here. And then the sine of 45 is positive root 2 over 2. And then the sine of 60 is going to be root 3 over 2. OK, now from here, I'm going to simplify. So I've got the square root of 2 over 4 uh, minus the square root of 6 over 4. And that's it. So what you're going to notice is we're going to have like very similar answers to a lot of these. In fact, it looks like cosine of 105 is going to be equal to, uh, what was the other one? Uh, let's see. Cosine of 7 pi over 12. So, you know, I kind of wonder here, is 7 pi over 12 actually the same as 105? That'd be kind of funny. Um, See seven. Well, let's we can figure it out real quick. I think it might be, um, but we can we can evaluate it real fast here. If you remember how to do that, we'll just replace this, the pi with 180. This is more of, of a curiosity. You don't have to do this, but I'm just curious. I think it might be, yeah, you know, 105. So I gave you the same problem twice. Um, that's okay. <laughs> that's funny. All right. So there you go. There's that one. Um, yeah, so it's the same problem as, as the first, very first problem. Okay, so we did number two. All right, yeah. Now let's take a look at B, negative pi over two. Okay, so this is definitely different because we haven't seen any negative angles, I don't think. But that means that we're probably going to have to find a, uh, you know, a, a difference formula here. So let's bring back the good old unit circle. And I'm looking for two angle measures whose difference is negative pi over 12, okay? So let's kind of go over some of these. So something minus something here. Okay, so I need a smaller angle minus a bigger angle. So let's try pi over four minus pi over three. See if that works. I'm going to do a little scratch work out to the side here. Let's see, pi over, I want to just check. I mean, I don't really know off the top of my head, but it seems reasonable to try these. Uh, so pi over 4 minus pi over 3. Let's just see if that actually works. I've got a common denominator of 12. So this would be 4 pi over 12 minus um, Let's see, that'd be, wait a minute. Did I do that right? No, I didn't. This should be 3 pi over 12. So 3 pi over 12 minus 4 pi over 12. 
uh, and that's going to be our winner here. That's going to be the, the negative pi over 12. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Okay, cool. So we got our angle measures here. We got sine of 3 pi. I'm sorry, not 3 pi. Pi over 4 minus pi over 3. And uh, I guess I don't really need this anymore. All right, let me go ahead and steal some of my work above. Just take the ones with all the pies. All right, so we're going to use the sine difference formula here. So the sine difference formula is going to start with sine of pi over 4 times the uh, cosine of pi over 3. Oh, look at that. I don't need to change that. Um, minus, good, uh, cosine of pi over 4 times the sine of pi over 3. All of that, all that's looking good. So now we're going to evaluate. Um, let's bring up the unit circle. We're going to need that. Everything's in quadrant 1. So let's see what we got here. We've got the sine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. Okay, nice. The cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. Oh, wow. Am I going to have to change anything here? <laughs> Minus, cos okay, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And sine is pi over 3. Yeah, I don't have to change anything, which means all this work is going to be the same. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, so you're going to notice this a lot, where you got to kind of have the same values over and over again. Um, yeah, wow. Is that right? Did I do that right? I guess so. Okay, so I guess 105, the cosine of 105 is going to be equal to the sine of negative pi over 12. Interesting. Okay, yeah, that's 45 minus 60 is going to be negative 15. So I guess what we have here are just two equal values. Okay, well... Yeah, not much more to say about that. The work is going to be the same as the previous problem, so I think we're good to go here. Now, with part C, uh, we've got uh, a tangent formula. Okay, so we're going to need to find two things that add up to 11 pi over 12, and I think we might have found them earlier. Um, let's try, I'm going to do a little scratch work here, see if I can find two angle measures that add up to pi over 12. So I'm going to try the ones that I just did, the pi over 4 and the pi over 3. When I get a common denominator of 12 here, that'd be, oh wait, no, I don't think this one's going to work like I thought it was. 3 pi over 12 and 4 pi over 12. That's only going to give me 7 pi over 12. So I need a bigger angle. Uh, maybe what I could try is, uh, let's try a pi over 2. So I'm going to change this to pi over 2, which is going to change this to 6 pi over 12. Now 6 plus 4 is 10, so I'm not quite there yet. Hmm... We're going to have to be a little bit creative here. So let's see what some of our, my options are. I've got pi over 12, 4 is uh, 3 pi over 12. I've got pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 12. I've got pi over 2. I might have to do a difference formula now that I think about it. Pi over 2 is 6 pi over 12. I don't see really a combination here that's going to get me to 11 by adding these up. Hmm. Well, let's, let's keep going. What's 2 pi over 3? Uh, I guess I'll write it over here. 2 pi over 3, which would be, you know, what I'm looking at. I'm just kind of going to the next angle measure here. Uh, times 4 times 4 would be 8 pi over 12. Aha! Found it. We can we can still stick with some because look, we got three pi over twelve, thirteen. Wow. That's, well, this is just scrap work anyway. Um, but yeah, so we've got three pi over twelve and eight pi over twelve are going to add up to eleven pi over twelve. So it takes a little bit of work to kind of find it sometimes, but it, you know if you just start writing all of your angle measures with the same denominator, uh, you can usually find it. So I'm going to rewrite this as tangent of 3, well, I guess pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3. 
Now, if you got a different combination or you use like a difference formula, um, it's okay. Your answer might look a little different, but like if you throw it in the calculator, you should get the same thing that I got. Um, and I need to, I'm gonna delete all this scrap work. I don't really need that anymore. Um, okay, so the tangent formula looks a lot different than the <coughs> sine or cosine formulas. So let's break this down. It's gonna be the sum formula. So it's gonna equal uh, tangent of the first angle which is pi over four, uh, let's see, plus, so we're gonna use the same sign as tangent of two pi over three, divided by one minus tangent of pi over four times tangent of two pi over three. Okay, so from here, we just need to evaluate each of these separately. Tangent of pi over four is gonna be root two over two. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's gonna be one, right? It's uh, root two over two divided by root two over two. Let's see what's going on here. I'll just hi hide myself for the time being. Uh, scroll up a little bit. Okay, so that's gonna be one, right? Tangent of 2 pi over 3 is going to be, looks like, negative root 3. So I don't really want to write plus minus. So I'm, it's going to be 1 minus root 3. And then 1 minus 1 times tangent of 2 pi over 3, which we said was root 3. Or negative root 3, rather. Okay, so just to clean this up, just a tad, I mean, we got, we got our answer here, but the denominator needs to be cleaned up. So I got one times negative root three is just gonna be negative root three, and then minus a negative is gonna be plus. There you go, okay. There we go. Okay, so for number three, and number four, they're gonna be very similar problems. This is gonna be more like the second kind of problem that we went over on the notes, um, where you have to draw a couple diagrams, you know, one for each angle measure, and, uh, and then kind of go from there. So it says, suppose uh, angle theta lives in quadrant two and tangent of theta equals uh, negative four thirds. Suppose, now this is a Greek letter, okay? So we're just using a different variable. Okay, it's a Greek letter, it's called psi. Um, actually looks like a psi, like, the, like a weapon. <laughs> um, and it's pronounced the same way. It's spelt differently though. It's actually P-S-I. Uh, anyway, so suppose psi lies in quadrant one and secant of psi is 13 over 12. Find the exact value of sine of uh, theta minus psi. So we don't actually have to figure out the angle measures here. It's not really gonna be helpful. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna use the difference formula for sine um, to help us out here. So we're gonna have sine of, um, how, how am I gonna type psi? I guess, do I have that as an option? Um, now nah, figure it out. Okay, so sine of theta minus psi is gonna be sine of theta times sine, uh, or I'm sorry, cosine of psi. Let's see if I can copy that from somewhere. Here we go, it's close enough. Um, can we make it italicized? No, it doesn't look that. Okay, so uh, plus cosine of theta times sine of psi. Okay. So what we have to do is actually find these values and we're gonna do that by constructing a diagram and using right triangles to figure out these values. So we're going to Find, we're going to uh, make a diagram for angle uh, theta, and we're going to make a diagram for angle psi. Okay. Okay, so for angle theta, 
Um, let's see, angle theta is in quadrant two. So I'm going to have my diagram kind of be focused on quadrant two here. And then angle psi is in quadrant one. Okay, so let's draw our triangles here. Um, since theta is in quadrant two, and we know that tangent of theta is negative four thirds, I'm going to label my side since tangent is opposite over adjacent with 4 over negative 3. Now I know that this is the side that's negative because we're in quadrant 2, so my x value should be negative and my y value should be positive. Um, so I'll use Pythagorean theorem to find this missing side and then we can figure out what these um, ratios are going to be. Okay, With angle psi, we're in quadrant 1 and secant uh, keep in mind that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be hypotenuse over adjacent. So that means that the hypotenuse is 13 and the adjacent is 12. Okay. So if I do a little Pythagorean theorem magic over here, what I'll find is that this hypotenuse is actually 5. And uh, this side length is actually also 5. Both of these are Pythagorean triples, which works out really nicely. Okay, so if that's true, which it is, um, unless I made a mistake somewhere, uh, we can go ahead and start evaluating these. So sine of theta, I'm looking at the theta diagram, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 4 fifths. Cosine of angle psi is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 12 thirteenths which makes sense because that's the reciprocal of secant, which, which they gave us. Plus a cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be negative 3 fifths. And then times sine of, sine of psi. Okay, that's kind of weird to say. Uh, so sine of psi is going to be um, opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 5 over 13. Okay, now, you know, I, I'm not going to fault you too much for using a calculator here because all we're doing is arithmetic. Um, but let's see if we can do this without a calculator. 4 times 12 is 48. Uh, 5 times 13 would be, 5 times 12 is 60, so that will be 65. Uh, and you might want to double check my arithmetic here. In fact, I'll check it at the very end. And then we have, uh, okay, so we've got minus, because we have a negative times a positive, uh, 15 over 65. And then 48 minus 15 would be 33. Yeah. I've made a large mistake on this one. Uh, maybe it's not that bad. Um, this is what I ended up with after working out the problem. I'm going to cut all that out of the video. Um, but basically what happened here is I just used the wrong formula up here. Uh, this plus should actually be a minus, and when I jump back to the video and you can see the formula, uh, you'll, you'll kind of see why it should be minus, um, but that's going to affect the sign all, you know, all the way down. So this should actually be minus here um, when you have sign of a, a difference. Um, you want to make sure this stays a difference. Uh, which means this is going to be minus, and then that means this is going to be plus, and instead of getting 33 here, I should get uh, 48 plus 15, which would be 63. So I actually get 63 over 65 as my final answer here. Um, the solution I got previously uh, was incorrect. So uh, hopefully this clarifies it for you, um, and uh, let's cut back to the original video. Down. Number four. There we go. Okay, now, of course, it's going to be set up totally different, um, but let, let's see what we got here. So, first of all, we're finding the value of cosine of theta plus psi. So, let's fix our sum formula because we're using cosine here. So, it's going to be cosine of theta times the cosine of psi minus the sine of theta times the sine of psi. Okay, so it says cotangent is, oh, so we have uh, some information here. We know sine is negative, 
So that puts us in either quadrants um, three or four, okay? Cotangent is positive in either quadrants one or three. So that means that we've got to be in quadrant three, or at least theta is in quadrant three. So I'm going to redo my diagram for theta and put us in, in fact, I'm just going to delete both of these, and put it in quadrant three. Okay, draw a little triangle. I want, I want to make it look halfway decent here. Okay, and, uh, and so we'll come back to that. Psi, okay, we've got some information about psi. So this one's a little trickier than the last one because we have to figure out what quadrant we're in. If secant is positive, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cosine's positive in quadrants one and four. So this is gonna be either quadrant one or quadrant four. Cosecant is negative. Now cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and sine is negative in quadrants three and four. So it looks like psi is gonna be in quadrant four. So very important to get that quadrant right because otherwise you're going to have the incorrect sign. You'll probably get the answer wrong. All right, so here we go. Okay, so now let's start labeling the side lengths here. Cotangent is root 8, so that's like root 8 over 1. Cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. So this is going to be root 8 right here, 1 here. I might, I'm going to actually have to use Pythagorean theorem to figure that one out. And then for psi, uh, it says... Cosecant of psi is, oh, I, I kind of wrote over it here, let's see, uh, negative 5 over 2. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be hypotenuse over opposite. Be careful here. Uh, I really don't like that I put the negative up here. The whole fraction is negative, but remember that the hypotenuse we're always going to label as positive. So we, this has got to be negative 2 over here. Very tricky. That, one is, that one's a little tricky. I kind of don't like how that's written. Uh, in fact, I might make a note for next year to go back and just write it like this with the negative, well, <laughs> that looks the same, with the negative like out to the front. It doesn't make a difference because these two numbers are equal, but it's a little, um, kind of points you in the wrong direction putting it up there. Okay, kind of, that, that's not very helpful. But anyway, let's go ahead and solve for this missing side. So it's going to be the square root of... Uh, square root of 8 squared plus 1, so that would be the square root of, let's see, the square root of 8 squared would be 8, and then 1 squared is 1, so 8 plus 1 is 9, so that's going to be 3. So this side is 3, that's kind of nice. And then over here we've got the square root of 5 squared is 25, minus 2 squared is 4, so we get root, looks like root 21. Okay, so is this side. And that's going to be positive because we're in quadrant four. Okay, so, um, all right, so let's, let's actually fill in the rest of this. So cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. <clears throat> so that would be root eight over three times cosine of psi, same thing, adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be, is this right, root 21? Ugh over five, who picked these numbers? <laughs> Minus the sine, oh, you know what? Hold up, hold the phone. In quadrant four, both of these need to be negative. Yeah, which still at, you know, when I divide a negative by a negative, I get a positive, but I didn't quite catch that. So that's kind of important to, you know, Every time you, you, you label these sides, make sure you got the right sign on there. Now, is that going to throw off anything? Yeah, that's going to throw off. This should be a negative root 8 over 3. Uh, this one looks good. Okay, so I think we're back in business here. So sine is going to be opposite. So it's going to be negative 1 over 3 times um, sine of psi, which is going to be negative 2 over five. Okay. Eight times 21. Yikes. I think we can do it. I think we got this. 
Eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. So 168. And a negative times a positive is going to be negative. And then three times five is 15. And then over here, we've got a, uh, a negative times a negative is going to be positive. So it's going to be minus a positive. Positive 2 over 15. And then let's just put it all together. We don't have any, um, uh, we don't have any square roots in the denominator, so we don't need to worry about rationalizing or anything like that. We just want to kind of combine these. Minus 2. I'll put the negative up here just for fun. And then over 15. All right, kind of an ugly answer, but that is the answer. <laughs> okay, this is what cosine of theta plus psi equals. Some negative, <laughs> some negative value. Um, all right, well, there's number four. Number five. Okay, so this is a good throwback question. Uh, you don't need to know any of this stuff to be able to solve this one. Um, so this is just saying we've got a function just some trigonometric function. The first thing says find f of 5. Okay, so just a little function notation reminder here. If I say f of 5, all that means is just plug in 5 for x. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Uh, we've got... Here we go. Equal, so f of 5 is going to equal 2 plus 3 times the sine of pi over 4 times 5. So that'd be 5. 5 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4. Now, if, these, if I combine these and I get an angle measure that's on the unit circle, then I don't need to worry about all the, all the sum and difference identities, okay? Now, if this works out to be something that's not on the unit circle, then I do need to go back and, and use uh, the identity here. But I'm kind of thinking it's going to work out uh, in our favor. So this will equal 2 plus 3 times the sine of 5 minus 3 is 2. So we get 2 pi over 4, which reduces to uh, 1 pi over 2. So this is going to be, this is going to work out real nice. Okay. Equals 2 plus 3 times sine of pi over 2 is going to be the y value at pi over 2, which is 1. So we get 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay. So our final statement here will be f of 5 equals 5. <laughs> so pretty straightforward there. And then the last part here, another throwback question, is going to be to sketch one period of this function. Okay, So I'm going to start by drawing the famous window here. It's been a while since we did a window pane graph. Um, hopefully don't forget how to do it. Uh, this is going to be a sine graph, so our graph is going to start at equilibrium, and it's a positive sign, so it's going to go up. So we're going to start here, we're going to go up, come back down, go back up again. This is really just so you don't forget how to do this, and every once in a while I like throwing in some of these review problems, um, because we still have our midterm coming up at the end of the year. And you don't want to forget how to do this. All right, so there's our, there's our, you know, our first cycle. And let's uh, figure out. So our D value here is 2. So this is going to be 2 right here. My A is 3, so I'm going to add 3 to get 5 and subtract 3 to get negative 1. So now you can kind of see where my x-axis is going to be right about here. And then uh, my phase shift, C over B. Ooh. So we got 3 pi. I'm going to do the little scratch work over here. 3 pi over 4. Uh, over pi over 4. Okay, so the over 4s will cancel out. The pi will cancel out. So we just get uh, 3. And then my period is 2 pi over b. So 2 pi over pi over 4 is going to be the same thing as 2 pi times 4 over pi. So the pi's cancel out. 2 times 4 is 8. So 3 plus 8 is 11. So as far as my you know, axes are concerned, x-axis right here, y-axis is going to be 3, 2, 1. It's going to be way over here. 
doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be, you know, approximately in the right position. Here's my y-axis, there's my x-axis, and there you go. There's one period of the graph. All right, that's it for today, y'all. Hope y'all uh, enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Um, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.